you see the uh, current uh, i that can be the current in an electric circuit can be uh, given by i equals to potential difference divided by resistance that is v by r this is a general one that you know ohm's law so next is that similarly heat flow h is given by <clears throat> temperature difference in the numerator and in the denominator thermal resistance this thermal resistance is something very 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 important okay this is the thermal rating actually okay <clears throat> uh similar thing the two formulas just considered that heat being uh, current here like current is equals to v by r i is equals to v by r similarly temperature difference which is theta that <coughs> is similar uh, to potential difference and normal resistance r that is similar to thermal resistance s okay so <coughs> the thermal resistance what is that s capital s thermal resistance capital s is defined as the resistance which allows the heat flow of 1 watt when a temperature difference of 1 degree celsius is maintained and it is given by capital s equals to kl by a same as rho l by a if you remember resistance and resistivity it is the same <coughs> any questions so far please raise if if there are any this is an analogy between electrical and uh, your uh, temperature or heat flow <clears throat> electric current and heat flow this is an analogy between the two and because of that analogy we can write uh, similar to i equals to v by r h equals to theta by s now this s is the thermal resistance which is in normal resistance we represent as r equals to rho l by a here it is s equals to k l by a just similar analogy <coughs> till this part anyone has any question no ma'am okay so this is a same thing like uh, electrical analogy <coughs> where small k is the thermal resistivity of the material small l is the length of the path of heat flow and capital a is the area of cross section through which the heat flows so <clears throat> this is about your uh, s which is nothing but thermal resistance now this thermal resistance is something that has to be evaluated in our underground cables means it is different for different cables for single core cable it is different for three core cable it is different so something uh, thermal resistance is something that often comes okay <clears throat> so thermal resistivity here is uh, k small k represented and it is expressed in degree celsius per watt per watt per centimeter okay so this is our <coughs> thermal characteristics of cables now um, let us just uh, put this exact same thing thermal resistance in the form of a circuit of an electric uh, underground cable okay you consider s as thermal resistance now just analogically le le let us just put it in circuit see this circuit where capital s S one, S two, S three, capital S one, S two, S three, S four, S five. These are all thermal resistances. Okay, and the temperature difference is in the form of a battery that is shown. So consider this as an equivalent circuit for the heat flow in a three-phase cable. Okay. <clears throat> Now. you see here it is written in s4 bedding in s5 serving g as ground and s1 s2 s3 these are in parallel this is the lead sheet so these are basically thermal resistances of lead sheet bedding serving ground <coughs> and our temperature difference acts as a potential difference like battery 
okay so the total temperature difference total temperature difference is the difference between the conductor temperature and the ambient temperature this uh, battery temperature difference as you can see it will act as which temperature difference between what and what between the conductor the innermost core and the ambient temperature outside okay so <clears throat> that is the two difference of the temperatures now this s1 capital s1 capital s2 capital s3 are the thermal resistance of the three dielectric parts which are in parallel obviously lead sheet which i told you and the heat flows through the bedding whose thermal resistance is capital s4 okay so finally it flows through the serving means outside it is coming outside layer by layer first lead sheet then bedding then serving <clears throat> so it is flowing through serving whose thermal resistance is s5 and the g represents the thermal resistance of ground that is that ambient ground to ambient temperature now the current flowing or the current carrying capacity of the cables depend on this heat dissipation and to calculate it it is necessary that uh, we obtain the thermal resistances of various parts through which the heat flows so you see the entire heat flow thing is concerned with our main uh, parameter which is s which is nothing but our <clears throat> thermal resistance okay so thermal resistances we need to know if we want to calculate the heat flow and how it is going exactly the path okay so till now anyone has any question no okay if you have any question please let me know this is a very simple thing thermal characteristics of a uh, cable and so in the thermal characteristics of the cable you have the ratings thermal rating rather and the main thing is thermal resistance that is the rating actually okay now let us move to <coughs> this one the thermal resistance of a single core cable very important okay uh, i'll uh, go not in detail but uh, because problems may come from this one the formula the current rating the thermal rating is yes. so let's move uh, thermal resistance of a single core cable now you consider this cable this is a cross sectional view okay of a single core cable watch properly small r is the radius small r that is the radius of the innermost that is the conductor part the core part so the coarse radius in the innermost coarse radius is small r you see the outermost circle outermost from the outermost circle to the center that radius is capital r so innermost circles radius is small r outermost circles radius is capital r okay and there are certain distances which is measured in terms of x that re represents our distance from the center of the concentric circles there are two other concentric circles apart from the innermost circle and the outermost circle those are or will be represented in, in the form of x okay so let us consider this that small r is the core radius capital r is the overall radius <coughs> okay small l small l is there that is not shown in the figure it is the total length of the cable obviously length will not be shown in your um, cross sectional view because it is the length okay you are taking here the cross sectional view okay so uh, small l is the length it is not shown in this figure uh, small k is thermal resistivity again uh, thermal resistivity not here in the figure we are assuming that the thermal resistivity is small k then comes ds ds is we are taking it as k dx by l let's just see here ds 
d s d small s is k d x by a so what is that k is thermal resistivity d x is the small part of the length of a concentric circle that they are taking so basically d x is a length small part of length okay so thermal resistivity into small part of length divided by a becomes what nothing but our resistivity uh, resistance thermal resistance means uh, we just saw this formula you see kl by a right so here in this thermal resistance of a single core cable we are writing it as ds means small part of this capital s as small ds equals to k dx by a means k into in place of l here because this l was the uh, that length part so here he, we are taking it as x so small dx divided by a so basically it is becoming our thermal resistance okay so differential part of thermal resistance ds is equals to k dx by a just rho l by a just like uh, resistance resistivity rho l by a similar to this thermal resistance ds is equals to k thermal resistivity just like rho and dx is <coughs> our differential uh, amount of uh, length and divided by a <coughs> which is nothing but the surface area or the cross sectional area okay so <coughs> now in place of a they are putting 2 pi xl 2 pi xl because obviously it is the a is the surface area so uh, in place of a 2 pi xl is being put and the numerator remains con constant so ds is equals to k dx by 2 pi xl <coughs> anyone has any questions please I hope you all are getting it. Yeah, ma'am. Hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> in place of uh, S or uh, rather thermal resistance, we are putting D S, small part of it, differential part of thermal <laughs> resistance, and we are getting this formula. Now, obviously, if we want the entire thing, we have to integrate. to get the we are differentiating it so again we have to to get it back we have to integrate it so capital s is equals to <coughs> small r to capital r because innermost core uh, radius to overall radius uh, integration is happening out of that area k dx divided by 2 pi into l okay so uh, that gives us this one and ultimately obviously in logarithmic value only you will get it because it is dx by x <coughs> okay integration diploma students are you are you confident in this one are you getting it understanding it or not anyone diploma students no okay um if you are not getting me ask me if not now you can ask me later but do just confirm that you are getting it okay <coughs> okay so this is our formula for thermal resistance of a single core cable which is very easy uh, k remember it just k by 2 pi logarithmic ln uh, r by r capital r by small r means outermost radius divided by innermost radius so k by 2 pi ln r by r this is our formula for thermal resistance of a single core cable now uh, here only in this expression certain values can be put especially the value of k that is a known a value for cables because the material of cable if you know then uh, you'll be you already know the value of k 
so uh, the value of the k for cables above i am just telling you the value of k for the cables above 22 kv is 550 while it is 750 for pressure up to and including 22 kv <coughs> so voltage is the main weighting depending upon 22 kv or uh, less than that or above that the cables k value is uh, depending upon that 550 or 750 or above something else like that so um, that value Uh, it is difficult to find the expression for the thermal resistance of three core cable the empirical fo formula that is given by simon scientist simon uh, is actually capital s equals to small k divided by 6 pi multiplied by 0.85 plus 0.2 t small t divided by capital t bracket close ln of 4.15 One minus one point one T by capital T bracket close again capital T plus small T divided by R bracket close plus one. So this is a huge empirical formula, you know. Well, uh, ultimately we see that capital T is the thickness of the conductor insulation, small T is the thickness of the belt insulation, and small R is the radius of the conductor. Okay. so <clears throat> i think this is uh, this much is enough if you write if if it comes then this is the uh, this much is enough if you write so that is the thermal resistance of a single core cable okay so this much is uh, i'll just continue to the next thing because i have to run <clears throat> today this is something that we will come to know uh, insulation resistance of a cable anyone has any idea what is insulation resistance means the meaning can be what the meaning can be you know thermal resistance we just studied now insulation resistance can be what how much resistance the insulation is providing to the current okay means the insulation that is being provided outside the core immediately after outside the core then layer by layer how much is that insulation resistance that it is providing to the current means the current flow basically insulation okay so <coughs> insulation resistance uh, this portion particularly often comes for the exam often comes it's very very common okay so it actually is the dielectric stress in the cable how much it is occurring so this part along with some uh, another one which is uh, grading of cables and the economical diameter of a cable these two derivations are extremely important means they often come i have oh uh, i forgot to share yesterday about the question bank today definitely i am going to share the question bank to you for the underground cables because you need to start preparing <clears throat> you see this is the cross section i don't need to tell uh, in very detail about this this we already did so the core is shown in the innermost circle outside is the layer of insulation and the direction of leakage current is also shown okay so these are all the normal uh, re means cross section of any uh, under can understand about these now our uh, concern in here is the insulation means the insulation of our uh resistance how much resistance is the insulation layer providing now 
let us just move into the main part of the insulation which is the leakage current leakage current direction it is shown it it is radial in nature means straight outside from the center to outside radially outside it can be uh, going now this direction of leakage current or uh, rather the uh, leakage current which is acting like this this has a certain influence on the cable now this section is a single core cable you can see uh, this is insulated with the help of the insulating layer now in such kind of cables <clears throat> the leakage current flows radially hence uh, the cross section of the path for such current is not constant means uh, the cross section uh, of the current whatever the current is flowing it's not the same flowing throughout so it is not constant but it changes through its length the cable's length now the resistance offered by the cable to the path uh, path of the leakage current that is called the insulation resistance remember this carefully you can write it down also what is insulation resistance the resistance offered by the cable to the path of leakage current is called insulation resistance so <clears throat> the resistance insulation resistance is nothing but uh, the resistance that is offered by the cable the cable is offering the resistance to the path of the leakage current you see the leakage current directions those leakage current uh, should not be high if the insulation is working properly now that is the main concern in a uh, in an underground cable so to calculate this insulation resistance we will first consider layer by layer as i told you we will consider a small section of the cylindrical cable uh, suppose radius x so we will move on to that this one so consider it as an elementary ring like structure a ring so for that ring the ring that is uh, shown a section is shown now that ring where the rings elementary uh, length is dx okay so small d let me just uh, tell you small d is considered as the diameter of the core here small d is diameter of the core and small r is d by 2 that is the radius of the core capital d is the diameter with sheath and capital r is equals to capital d by 2 radius of the cable with sheath okay now we are considering just like the integration we did for the thermal resistance here also the integration will be done for the elementary part dx okay uh, first we will have uh, the differential part of the uh, resistance and then we will have the differential part uh, integrated over the part from r to r like d to d small d to d similarly r to r so <coughs> same thing we are doing just the like we did for the thermal resistance here for the insulation resistance cross sectional area is 2 pi x l the resistance of the elementary cylindrical shape is dr dr equals to rho dx by 2 pi l am i audible yes ma'am okay <clears throat> so the cross sectional area is 2 pi xl and uh, then you have the th thermal uh, res uh, the resistance insulation resistance uh, small d r capital r i that is in, uh, capital r i is insulation resistance so differentiation of uh, insulation resistance is equals to rho dx divided by 2 pi xl 
so while the cross sectional area is perpendicular to the flow of the current depends on the length l of the cable so length of the cable is l that is why uh, the small l is represented like this so they have also written uh, at the end you see as capital r equals to rho l by a means resistance equals to resistivity into length divided by cross sectional area similarly we are writing this insulation resistance so ultimately when we are integrating the total insulation resistance of the cable can be obtained by integrating the resistance of an elementary ring from their inner radius up to the outer radius that is small r to capital r obviously same thing so uh, small r to capital r rho dx by 2 pi xl that will be our formula and then integrating ultimately we are getting rho into uh, rho divided by 2 pi l multiplied by ln capital r minus ln small r so this will be our expression at the end <coughs> and uh, the radius can be represented in the form of diameters also because r uh, 2r is always equals to d so that is why we are just putting it like this and the value of ri that is the insulation resistance is always very high the expression shows that the insulation resistance is inversely proportional to its length so as the cable length increases the insulation resistance decreases this shows that if two cables are joined in series then the total length increases and hence their conductor resistances are in series giving higher resistance but their insulation resistance are in parallel decreasing the effective insulation resistance thus if two cables are connected in parallel conductor resistances get connected in parallel while the insulation resistance get connected in series this is extremely important just uh, note it down that normal <coughs> conductor resistance and insulation resistance are not the same uh, like uh, formula wise while uh, the conductor resistances are will act as in series the insulation resistance will act as in parallel so this being the expression um there is a problem which this problem is a very popular problem means it often comes in with you and i have given in the assignment also go through it you see it i think it will be easier it says that a single core cable has a conductor of diameter 1.2 cm so diameter d is given and its insulation thickness is 1.6 cm insulation thickness is also given the uh, specific resistance of the insulating material is 7.5 into 10 to the power 8 mega ohm cm calculate the insulation resistance per kilometer of a cable if now this resistance is to be increased by 20% calculate the thickness of the additional layer of insulation required <clears throat> fine it seems to be tough but if you jot down the information one by one see uh, small r is equals to cap uh, small d by 2 small d is given 1.2 so 1.2 divided by 2 you get small r that is the radius and the thickness is given as 1.6 insulation thickness your formula is this <coughs> okay so small r plus this thickness gives r capital r so capital r is equals to small r plus small t you are getting rho is given here specific resistance of insulating material is 7.5 so rho is given so your formula wise r i equals to rho divided by 2 pi l into ln capital r by small r so you are getting it <coughs> that small l is given 1 km you are converting it in meter because others are in centimeter and here you are just 
putting in the formula you are getting ri that is the insulation resistance rest part like the other part of the problem is the second part second part says that uh, calculate the resistance uh, if now the resistance is to be increased by 20% calculate the thickness of the additional layer this is a separate problem means a separate part apart from that you see whether you are understanding the normal this putting this formula or not that you see i'll just share it with you and i will uh, end the class here only okay go through it otherwise you won't understand just go through it today only <clears throat> okay students so let me just finish this thank you for joining uh, i'll just stop the class here thank you everyone